The real war is that it's happening now. This it's war. It's a, it's a spiritual, mental war. Yeah. We're in a spiritual war. They understand and COVID and yeah. you know fighting is just what you see, but it's yeah. a spiritual what's going on now. It's been a spiritual war from the, the start of days till now. Mm -hmm. And as you got to think about the next generation, your grandkids, yeah? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what world are we bringing them into, mm -hmm. yeah? Because we're supposed to be blessed. Mm -hmm. The amount of technology and money, that's about that's for anything. But we're in a war, it's just, the, the world is getting darker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's getting darker and darker. The amount of stabbing and shooting the kid yeah. you just hear on a daily basis like it's nothing. Before if you heard someone got shot or stabbed, you're like, oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now it's a daily basis. Oh, someone's got shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone got killed, someone got run over, someone got it's like daily and it should be never past as just a normal yeah, it thing. Shouldn't be trivialized. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be trivialized, exactly. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Beatbox created. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Caller Podcast. <laughs> Tell you, it's a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Caller Podcast, live and direct. Not in central London, not in central London at all. We are in Leicester, in the middle of England, the Midlands, place to be, the place where I've haunted many, many years. And most of the time, it's with gentlemen that's next to me. Big shout out to thefeatkings.co.uk, old tight old polarrecords.com and strangestations.co.uk. Um, it's very important that I must announce Formation Records is in the building, drum and bass, superior, producer, DJ, record label, CEO extraordinaire. It's been a privilege and a pleasure, ladies, man. Are we in here for a chat? It's DJ SS inside there for like What's up, you bro? Wait, man. Wait, man. Yo, how long have we got? Oh, no, I know. Stories. <laughs> All of them should stay on the tour, man. That's right, yeah. That's right. Yeah, we're all of us staying on tour, man. Right? <laughs> it's the Yo, best how are you, gentlemen? Yeah, man. I'm good, man. Yeah, Bless man. Bless you, man. Yeah, very blessed. What's been happening? What's been good? Because obviously, your legacy starts from such a young age in you, way before a lot of these lot that are watching now were around, they weren't even kicking in the clubs. Uh, what have you been up to? What's been going on? Just been doing the same old thing. It's all about staying proactive, not waiting for the change, making the change. As you know, you came in, we brought you into the drone base thing. Yeah, this world is the base, And we travelled the world. I looked at, because when you stand still and you keep doing the same thing, you get the same old results. Mm. So when we were doing the tour drum bass wise, I thought we need to bring something different to it. Then I seen you on one show and I was like, yo, let me bring this guy as an entertainment, as a live element mm. to the tour. And it just blew, you know what I mean? When Australia, America, mm. Russia, Trouble, all them places, and it was, I think that was the pinnacle, that was the icing on the cake. Because we bought something else of the party, do you know what I mean? It, it just fitted in. People were saying, oh, that won't work, but, you know, yeah. entertainment is entertainment. Yeah, yeah, and it did work. Um, it really was my intro to drawing bass, pretty much, and the, the way that it was integrated, especially in those locations like the US, mm -hmm. because the US, they need an, an, adop an adoptee that, because obviously, drum and bass has its roots in, um, in the UK. Transferring is reasonably simple. Play it loud and go for it. But then, if you have this like interim mode, it's just like you're, you're throwing back, out, you're re-exporting the idea of beatboxing to them in a, in a, in a different style. Yeah, yeah man. That, that, and I think that really spearheaded a lot of the touring and debauchery for sure. That's right. Yeah, man. Mm. You've always been a um, a proactive character within the scene. Everyone that has ever come across DJ SS, and we're talking from the beginning, has always been. You know, he's He's a machine, yeah. and I can just understand. Like you, you wake up, you know, I, I, I even had this conversation with your car yeah. in the car yesterday. It's like me and my, my manager Duncan at the time were often saying to myself, "Okay, so we go to bed then. He's still awake. So when does he sleep?" <laughs> <laughs> well, whilst you are doing things, I'm sleeping and getting recovery because 
I learned from an early age, especially when you're touring, is make sure you get your rest moments in when you can. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't party. Because to me, it's about, I get high off the music. Yeah, and that's the ultimate buzz. And if you intake music correctly, that's what it was created for, worship. You know, so you can't beat that high. Natural high, no substance. So it's very important that we get our rest in, especially when we tour in America and we're doing 20 shows. Mm -hmm. You make sure you get plenty of rest, plenty of sleep. And we come here, to, we're coming on tour to do a job. Mm -hmm. um, for the best part of it and enjoy it. And it's very important with the people that you travel with and tour with. Because mm. we're only in venues for, you know, probably two, three hours. Mm. The rest of 22 hours, we're together. So it's very important that you bring the right people to connect. And I was very, in my early ages, I just took people I thought were good artists and, you know, thingy. And it, I, it definitely backfired on a couple of times. Did it? Wrong mentality, yeah. Really? wrong mentality, you know, when you're touring and you see people's demons, it reflects on the whole tour. Yeah, it does. And it's like, no, nah, I can't wait to get off this tour. And I'm, I've, I'm only touring with people that have the right vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's that that shows the technicality yeah. in their beliefs, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Because you read them so much. That's right. It's all about professionality. And, just, and when you're touring, it's not about you. Mm. It's about the whole thing, making sure the priority gets what it wants, making sure you get what you want, yeah. making sure the crowd got what they want. Yeah. Not all about me, myself and I. So there is definitely an art of touring. And that's why I think our tour has been very successful, mm. especially in America. Because we think about, I'm a promoter, I'm a DJ, record label. Mm. We think about all aspects of it. Because everybody has to get something from it. Yeah, if it just stops at me as a DJ, then nobody else gets a benefit. Because I can go and tour myself as an MC and earn a lot more money. Mm. But I want to give value for money. That's why we bring two, three, four guys on tour. Because we want to go to places where they get a full showcase, they get a full entertainment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I do, I do. It's all about the entertainment aspects of it. Yeah, and the dynamics of drum and bass have changed so much, you know, different sub genres within it. Mm -hmm. You can really take out on night with a selection of different DJs that really fit the, the mould of each sub genre, or no, at least the, 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 the moves and how that is translated to an audience. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the whole point of wild drum and bass. It says what it says on the tin, wild drum and bass. It's not a style, it's not a formula, it's about the movement, mm -hmm. yeah? So it's like a chameleon, it's got to be able to change its spots. That's why we were we last the, the test of time, because I didn't call it the formation tour. Mm -hmm. That it would be based around formation artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to make it as big as possible and expose drum based music to places that weren't exposed. When we was doing Russia, there was very few people who come to Russia. Um, I don't know, know, know what I mean. Big, and big up MC Trip and Skeletri, yeah, honestly, yeah, that was yeah, yeah, the crew, yeah, the crew, man. What were the arenas like? That? I mean, that was Russia, St. Petersburg, these were like 40k arenas. Yeah, they ridiculous. were big, but... Um, People were crazy. Yeah, they were saying. crazy. That's why my... Um, that's why I don't take politics into music. What's that going on um, with the whole yeah. war um, aspect of it is... Madness, yeah. yeah. I want to play blessings to everybody Oops. that's lost somebody, that's going through something. Yeah. But my policy is always music will always um, share the way in love. Madness. And I speak to my Russian friends, and they tell me eighty percent of the Russian population are not in this war. They can't believe it. Yeah. They're not in it at all. Yeah. They don't support it. They're not in it. And I look at it. Um, I look at it. If Boris went to war with America or Scotland. Yeah. That was ninety exactly. percent of the British won't be in it, yeah. yeah. But we would get the backlash. So you got to look at it from a different perspective. I have a lot of Russian friends, I have a lot of UK friends yeah. in the music industry. And we've been to Ukraine as well. We've all been to yeah, these been places. places yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and amazing, beautiful places, man. It's just like what's happening in the world is right now. I always believe music and love will always save the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I don't look at it from politics side of view because politicians will make policies that benefit themselves. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? And they say it's benefiting the country, and blah, 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 but there's no reason for nobody to go war, I don't believe. No, really. You know what I'm saying? We've got enough, you know, there's enough resources for everybody to live 
and be part as one yeah. global economy. 100%. You know what I mean? This has been a very um, important, and not that you need a, a spiritual drive for this, but there is definitely a, a, um, a revised DJ SS recently, which a lot of your fans will, will know of, and, and that is your spirituality has come into play, and th th this, is, this is a conduit yeah. to a lot of your decision making, the music you make, and everything. Um, we're actually here right now, we're actually in the, the, the house in the church at the moment. That's right. You know what I mean? I'm buzzing. You know? <laughs> yeah. right. We want to do the podcast, we did the show last week in Leeds, yeah. last night in Leeds, we drove to Leeds, got there, done our sets, came back. We had to crash it halfway as well. Crash we got like two hours sleep here. Yeah. Yo, we got back at seven o'clock in the morning, nine thirty. We were here in the church because <laughs> I don't make no excuses. Yeah. It was one moment, definitely. Yeah. When I turned around to her, I was like, "Do I?" So I was like, "Is anybody like what it used to be?" Bro, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, one, this one, two hours sleep kind of business has yeah. got us. Isn't it? That's right. <laughs> you know, it's touring. It's like it's like being on tour. Yeah. But, yeah we, we played music last night, now we're going to hear music in a different format like that Incredible. Um, changes, reaches your soul and I'm bringing Keller Keller to experience experience Hell yeah. you know, because I believe everybody should have a choice you know what I mean? Yeah. to experience the gospel in a way what makes because nobody's you know what, I think this young, this generation now you remember when we was at school it was like going to school church when you were a kid you go to church on a Sunday. You used yeah. to pray in church before you had your milk and biscuits and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the, the generation of that era was much more respectful. Yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah for sure. We had a, it was a better, kind of loving world. Yeah. Once they once they took the church out of the schools, you got to remember the church, the school idea was built from church mm -hmm. hospitals. Mm -hmm. It's all church foundations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all of biblical principles: police forces, governments, yeah, schools. Yeah. And since when has this stuff ever been fashionable? Yeah. It's not. It's, it's an institution. It's that's a sort right. of thing that's built on the foundations of serving and protecting and, and that's right. you know, just basic human, you know, living and principles. Acts of kindness. That's yeah. right. And now they've took the time to take the church out of the world. Yeah. This is why we we got into the situation of COVID and this all this madness is because people are ruining the world. Yeah. It's man that's ruining this global economy. It's not. Anything else, it's, it's all brought down to man's power, man's greed, and not what we're going through now. Two years of COVID, then a war, then a financial crisis, and it's just going to get worse. So you've got to understand it. So I'm saying people yeah. just need to get ready mentally, understand where we are. Yeah. Because yeah? we, then everything's trapped, if everything's in line to, to compress us. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to go too deep in people, no, no, but no, you, no, have no. To, you have to see what's coming and see what's happening. I think we all get clouded with misinformation, cross-information, mm -hmm. fake news and all that. Yeah. You know, we're so congested and it's crippling and that is the real World War Three. Yeah, that's because right. Because if we took all these comments and everything people talk about and actually took it out on the street, trust yeah. me, there'd be guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Right, for real. Yeah. The real war is there, it's happening now. It's, it's, real. it's, a, it's a spiritual, mental war. Yeah. We're in a spiritual war that you understand and COVID and yeah. you know fighting is just what you see. But yeah. it's a spiritual war what's going on now. It's been a spiritual war from the, the start of days till now. Mm. And as you gotta think about the next generation, your grandkids, yeah? Mm. What, what 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 world are we bringing them into? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because we're supposed to be blessed. Mm -hmm. The amount of technology and money, that's about that's for awesome. anything. But we're in a war, it's just, the, the world is getting darker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's getting darker and darker. The amount of stabbing and shooting the killing, yeah. you just hear on a daily basis, like it's nothing. Before if you heard someone got shot or stabbed, you're like, oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now it's a daily basis, oh, someone's got shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone got killed, someone got run over, someone got, it's like daily, and it should be never past as just a normal yeah, thing. It shouldn't be trivialized. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be trivialized, exactly. Yeah, I think a lot of it as well, there's a lot of social platforms then that they they're free for people, they've always been yeah. free. You know, you can log, you download that app for free and mm. then you're on it. But th that, there's a control mechanism within that where That's you're right. not paying for it. So therefore, they own the shit yeah. and they can transfer whatever they want. Um, I, watched the, I watched the thing, a very important thing on TikTok. He says, in China, yeah, mm. their TikTok, they've got blocking it. Yeah, 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 it's, exactly. yeah, no, exactly. yeah. it's all positive. They, they've got people doing good things, the kids are like on education, they're doing acts of kindness and it's spread, you know, everything's geared. So when you're seeing it, but then they've sent it over to Europe and everything's about funny cuts, yeah. you know, 
things to make people laugh. Sex you know, lies, yeah, yeah, sex lies and videos. Like, they, they cut it off in China at seven o'clock in the evening. That's they? right. Things yeah, like that. and it's because you've got to remember some manipulation. Because yeah. once you get people, it's like they're pressing the button. People are seeing these funny videos and these crazy videos and these you know stabbings and whatever, and people are liking it. So you breed in a society that thinks that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, and the Chinese, that's why they have so much power because they're educating their generation, their way. Yeah. You know, they're blocking certain platforms. Yeah, you've got to watch this. You know, when you go certain parts of China, what's happened? These things are blocked. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah? you've got to get a VPN. People don't understand that. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, that's a bit hardcore, but no, what they're trying to do is control what goes out there. They're trying to get their nation to be educated. positive, educated. Yeah. Yeah. I remember playing a club in China. First time, no cash, cashless. I'm like, mm, yeah, no, you pay with WhatsApp. Uh, I mean, um, forgot what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's thing yeah, yeah. We pay or tweeted yeah. something like that. It's like, wow, because everything's controlled. Mm -hmm. There's nobody ripping off money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everything you can it's see. Kind of ahead of that blockchain. Yeah, ahead thing. of the yeah. team, you know what I mean? And it's like, yo, they're creating a new world order. Yeah? And people might say it's control, but no, they're benefiting. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what we do in life, we all going to have a higher power. A boss, you know what I'm saying? Whether we think we're the boss, there's always going to be somebody above us. Mm. Yeah, that is the way of life. But people don't want to live their lives. They want to be me, myself, and I. I want to be in control. I'm doing it my way, and that's mm. the only way possible. But when you live like that, you end up with you, you, and you. Yeah? Because, mm. like I say, it's a principle. If God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. Ooh. Yeah? Check that one out. If he gets you a blessing, he gets, if God can give you a thousand pounds just out of the blue. I say, yo, yeah, but I need you to, you know, shh, go to your friend or to somebody that's in need that you know that can do with a hundred pounds or, you know what I mean, some, you know, charity or something like that, that will give it to you. But if it stays with you, it stops there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. Yeah, I do know what you mean. And the, high, the hierarchy, mm. hierarchy levels. Yeah. Um, we're talking of hierarchy levels, I mean, a young SS, could you ever foreseen that the the, the, the the upgrading, the, the lily pad leaping up your career, um, you know, starting with you know lighter, one of the biblical mm. you know um, records of, of of the beginning of jungle era, mm. through to owning your own record store, mm. creating your own tour company, um, uh, building the the label formation, which doesn't just house drum and bass and jungle, mm. that has a whole bunch of different things. And you're able to then transfer that around the rest of the world, which to a look to to a, a modern day um, music scene seems to be they're often um, butted up in within their territories, and they're they actually can't afford, nor are they thinking ahead of going outside the UK. You thought visionary, you thought go international with this drama based thing. Um, uh, how how does how was this something that you always envisaged? No, because I, I, like I say, when I was a DJ at first, I was a break dancer. I got into music as a break dancer. I always loved music, but break dancing was my passion back in the 80s. What did you read my name? Um, scratching style. Come on. And That's what SS stuff. stands for. Yeah, I was a hip hop DJ and we was break dancing. When the break dance fight, you know, when we was going to nightclubs, we, me and my crew were the only ones. So I'll come around, just doing our thing. You get me? And it started, we had so much love for the music. And when the breakdance fight died down, we thought, yo, the only way to keep this going is to control the music. Mm -hmm. We weren't DJs, you know what I'm saying? So that's what we gave. What crews were there about What crews were other breakdance crews were around? Skywalkers, yeah. um, Style 2 was our crew. Nice. Um, Electronauts. And we used to go to London to all the breakdance things. I remember meeting Goldie. Really? Yeah. Had Kangles, I think he saw me at Kangles or something like that. Right. Well, I went to one of the B-Boy concerts in London, the breakdance competitions, and it was just yeah. mad. And it was just that's why, um, like for Hysteria, Kenny Khan we used to play for him as hip hop DJs. Really? That's all I knew him, yeah. Uh, Road Menders, when it was old school back in the 80s. He was on that. Yeah, we used to play that. So that's my relationship with people like that. And I remember. That's a legacy, well, you guys. I, I remember wow. playing. Um, Brixton, uh, Brixton Fridge it was called now, mm -hmm. yeah, it's called whatever it's called now, um, in a people band with the Scratch DJs, 18 piece people band, I'm going to Brixton Academy when I was like 16, 17, bro, I was like, yo, on the stage, the venue's packed, 
And we had a cameo like chuk, 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 for about one minute, whole band on stage. But that was my experience into the music thing. I remember wow. taking my turntables and it got stolen. What? Yeah, my turntables got stolen. We was packing up the van at the end. expensive now. And then, that's what I'm saying. I was like, I was heartbroken, man. But it was a lesson. It made me think, yo, you know, make sure you protect your stuff. I learned at old age, anything I've done. And that was the beginning that I, my, I got big up Stan Samuels, who was the band leader. He showed me the way musically, because we used to work in this people band, rehearsals. We, me and my DJ partner would just stay there whilst the whole band practices and then we'll get a camera just chugga 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 on two records we had to go, you know what I mean? But it was that experience of being patient mm. and then I remember one rehearsal said, yeah, come around my house went to his house in his flat and he pressed the button I'm like, where's the band? You know what I mean? I'm looking for the band yeah. Cubase, yeah? Ooh. They introduced me to Cubase yeah, It blew really cool. my mind, yo I said why is that? You just played exactly everything we do in the band, just on the computer. I said, yo, I invested every single penny of my money to get a computer, and that's what set me up. Wow. Yeah? To be able to control it. It's all about being able to dictate the pace. If you can make the music like that, because before you'd have to hire big studios, yeah. get the drummer in, get the vocalist in, get the guitar player, and just be in a session half the day, and then retakes, retakes, retakes. Yo, with this. I'm controlling the band, yeah. and that's what got me into the game. So I'm big up to the Stan Samuels for that. Really. What a profound way of explaining your your experience yeah, of man. the studio. Yeah. So Cubase was reasonably new. Yeah, very, very new. It was just like, what is this? Because I, I couldn't find them. You imagine? Yeah, it's, 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 a, yeah, it's, a, it's a magic trick. Right? Yeah. 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 You press a button, the whole band's playing. Like note for note, key for key. I'm like, and it was like, I was like. Whoa, you know, and you can see the layers, you think, how did you get that? You know, you remember Liquid Velocity, and back in the day, you had sampling seconds for six seconds. Yeah, so you yeah. can just sample and cut it open, use the chop it open, it was just mind like, mind-blowing. Mind-blowing, bro. So I look at anything now, anything possible. Yeah. From seeing that now, to be able to having, like, everything in your people before, you had to have a studio, you still have to have the studio, you still have to have the keyboard, you know, the synths, the samples and all that. Now, you just have a laptop. People yeah. can make music on their phone. That's what's interesting, because a lot of people from that 80s, especially with the hip hop stuff, were using MPC players. Cubase, yeah. because obviously the other sampling that was going in, yeah. and, and Jungle, Drum and Bass, well, Jungle for his time was very, you know, amen driven, yeah, yeah, yeah. and a lot of sample driven. Yeah. But I guess incrementally, every time, for the start of Cubase, we had infinite opportunities, but you would whittling, be whittling it down with every yeah. sample you do. Yeah, yeah. Before you know it, you're making the music for the DJ, and there's only one person. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that was, um, I think that was uh, definitely that experience. I remember getting Cubase and making my first Psycho EP. I didn't know what I was doing. If you listen to one of the tunes, I hit a bum note where it's completely out of the key. I didn't know how to delete it. So I just left it on the record. Like, oh, uh, yo. So you can check that out. You'll be it. It was, just, it was just that amazing experience. And then I started making music. And then I started like, because we had a little bit of connections so linking with artists. Uh, Adam, you see, last night, the main man there, Mega Drive, he came forward and came in my bedroom as a box room, literally the bunk bed. Last night, right? Yeah. yeah. It was no bigger than this space. Right. Four was in this room. I had my bunk bed, I had a studio against the wall, we stood there, it was, we couldn't turn around, right? it was just like, ah, <laughs> making <laughs> tunes, it was like the experience, you think, how did I do that? Tango, um, God bless his soul, was in there, and we were just connecting, it was just, and you literally had to connect in them ways. Do you know what I mean? In the scene. We was in the scene. In the sweat box. In, in the sweat box. It's a little bedroom making things. And it was just then, it was just, it was just a connection. Everything just, jigsaws just fitted into place. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just a connection because everyone was there, was, had a chance to express themselves. Some people jumped at the chance. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was quite easy to connect. We just, we just put the dots and it, I, um, I think our pathway was opened. I think, because we had a blessing, because we were just connection after connection after connection, stepping stones after stepping stones, and the doorway was open, because our policy was, we ain't signing artists that are signed, we want new artists, mm. we want to get fresh, because nobody gave us a platform. Yeah. When we was trying to make music, when we was thinking, there was no majors, there was no other labels, nothing, there was nothing. Nothing. So no our thing was, we're going to be the major, yeah. and give the artists a platform. Yeah. Yeah, and we still, I still do that to this day. I might have 
few people have come in to remixes and really, and stuff like that. Mm. But my always thing is to bring through fresh talent and give them an opportunity. Because mm. at the end of the day, is then they're supposed to give somebody else an opportunity. That's the that's the rule. That's, that's the rule. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because once it stops at you, that's why you see a lot of labels come and go. Yeah. Because they make it about them. Yeah, the, our branding has been influenced with the longest standing drum and bass, mm. i.e. officially. I don't mean put out a record 20 years ago and then come back put out a record now. I'm talking about every year, yeah, yeah, from 1990, 91, right to every year we've put out a release. Formation Nobody right. else has done that. Yeah? Formation right. right to this present day. So we're trying to now, we're trying to go through the Guinness Book of Records to get it official. Yeah, Stan Bolt in there, man. Because when I think about the history and so many people that yeah. we walk through and connect with it, it might blow my mind. I listen to records and think, oh, Carl Cox on a remix for this. Oh, what is size Oh, that's what I'm saying. You're getting these yeah, people, you're getting the, the leverage, the, the, the size of the man. formation records, man. Um, do you think that's, do you think part of the reason that that, that closed door, independent, um, bringing new kids up, bringing new people into the mix. Just because you brought me into the mix, I don't know exactly how that affected me, but do you think the, do you think this is the reason why drum and bass jungle has stood the test of time? Because 100%. Yeah, it's, it's not controlled by majors. It's not controlled, right? It's not by controlled by majors, because what majors jump on was hot, yeah? Mm -hmm. They look at, they're very good at manipulating, see, that's why they'll always be big. They control, they dictate, dictate the narrative. Mm -hmm. So if they control the narrative, you're going through their networks. They can make a hit just like that mm. because they have all the eggs in the basket. Mm. The thing about drum and bass is we are the majors. Mm. You know, the labels, any drum and bass labels are the majors because we're controlling our own entity, our own scene, and it's always been like that. And I just think, I think there's been a little kind of biased against us. You know what I mean? We get held back, but if you go to the events now, drum and bass is the biggest it's ever been. Heaving. It's in absolutely yeah. insane. Even when, even when the promoters are normal, you know, you're so busy. So yeah, there's, there's about 800 people. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's insane. <laughs> and I think we, we, us as artists and promoters and DJs and record labels, have to make sure that we keep the mantle going and educate the next generation because it's too easy. Yeah. Yeah. And these, I think, a lot of people can abuse it. Yeah. They can abuse their little new fame stardom and before they realise it, because they've made basic mistakes, they're gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're gone. You know what I mean? Because they get hype, they get into a hype and they believe it's about them. Well, they always come back down. Yeah, yeah. everybody comes down and you've got to see what we're going to go through. You said that last night, was yeah. it? Um, you, said, you said 80%, no, 98% of people who make it to the top. Yeah. You know, they, they burn a little bit. Yeah. Really brightly. Yeah. And sometimes it feels up because it, they, 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 they forget about the roots. Yeah. They always come back down. It's all about, it's all about um, foundations and staying proactive. Because mm. everyone wants to, everyone, I believe, gets their limelight, mm. that they're hot. Even if for six months or a year, mm. we've all done it, yeah? We're all going thing it. The problem that people struggled with is staying at the top. Yeah. And some people can't deal with it. But be, 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 be appreciative that you made a breakthrough in something, mm. yeah? And as long as you're maintaining and you're putting out good content, you'll always be able to do something. Whether it's your old or new or whatever, it's not, that's not the key. It's like if you build foundations, you build a house, yeah? Mm -hmm. you, you, you're always gonna be the foundation, but if you don't keep fixing the roof and painting the house and doors and fixing your windows and you know doing whatever, yo, that house is gonna crumble yeah. to a certain extent. It's always gonna stay stagnant. It might not crumble because if that foundations are solid, mm -hmm. It will still be there. It will still be recognised about that house over there. But man, are building houses. So true. Yeah, they're building countries and cities. You understand what I'm saying? Whilst your little house is there, they're building that. So you've got to make sure you maintain that your house is there and it's maintained. Your windows are clean. Yeah. You've been uh, a property developer in this scene for a while, brother. Um, what keeps you? From, what keeps you motivated? What keeps, I mean, this is not. This is just. This isn't like. This is every day. This come. These kind of things. They come out, the message is on it all the time, you know. Is it energizer bunny? Where, where's it, where's that come from? Where's it? Cause I because if you if you we've been running this thing for over thirty two years and I believe that's a blessing. Yeah. You know, you anybody that has been in an experience to be their own boss for thirty two years, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I look at it, you know, would I wanna go and work for anybody else? If it's due to music, to help out 
to be part of it, but I won't give up what I'm doing for nobody. Mm. Yeah, it's just that being able to, to have the freedom to do what you want in your time. Because I'm probably working seventy percent now. I can add another thirty percent to my input quite easily, but really? it means making sacrifices I'm not prepared to make because yeah. it means I'm chasing money. And my life is not about chasing money. My mind, life is about maintaining what I have. That's beautiful. Yeah, and open up doors for other people to come through. Because mm. money doesn't bring you, money might bring you success, but money doesn't bring you happiness. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't bring you no. Money might bring you happiness for a time, but it doesn't bring you peace. It doesn't. Bring and you that's peace. the that's the key to life is peace. Waking up every day, no matter what drama you're going through, no matter what situation, no matter what comes your way, you can be at peace. You can sleep at night. Yeah, because you could have a million pounds in the bank and be a wreck. You know, just look at the stars, the history of stars that have, you yeah. know, ended their life or ended their career or yeah. just walked away from it because they're not at peace. Yeah. Burnt out. They're yeah, burnt out. It's like, yo, and you look at them, Jim Carrey he said he wished everyone could be a millionaire to realise how unhappy they would be. Yeah, almost reverse engineer your life yeah. starts a millionaire and old. Yeah. And then go backwards to your childhood. Yeah. And realise what life is really all about, isn't it? For real, so. um, before we look, because we are actually about to get into some church business in there. Um, what's less to say? Big up Bring the Paint as well, big up uh, the graffiti scene over here, because it's thriving. Yeah. Um, what's the, what's the, what's this is amazing, it's I'm born and bred Leicester, right? You know, that's why I've never left. It's like when you have something here and you're successful, why leave? People leave for greed, I want to be more successful, I want to go London, I want to go New York, I want to think it, but Less is my hometown. If I can bring something to the table that inspires the next generation, inspires more to people, that's where God has placed me. Mm. He's placed me here for a reason. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I've never, I've, I've, I've had a feeling to leave for a few months and stuff like that, but every time I thought, nah. Do you know what I'm saying? My, my most important thing is my children and my life. And I believe that Leicester, you've got to remember, we were in the premiership. Mm. Yeah, uh, on the home place, so the unknown right. identity. We won the Premiership, a little old city mm. won the Premiership, yeah? So there's a, always been a blessing in the city. There's so much talent which people will see. There's so much going on Did, in the city. This the second biggest carnival, isn't there? Is it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, when before, yeah, it was the second biggest yeah, carnival. And, that. and uh, it's kind of dropped off a bit now. Yeah. But it's a little old Leicester because we have a sense of community here, for sure. But because like, things are changing, it's changing in this world, we're fighting a battle, you know what I mean? Like I say, we're fighting a spiritual battle, so it's coming for everybody. But I think Leicester's place, very multicultural, is one of the most multicultural places. 100%. Yeah, in the country, for sure. Um, and because it's, it's contained, you know, around certain areas, and there's, yeah, there's beef and talk and stuff, but it's not crazy wars, you know what I mean? It's they're manageable wars, you know what I'm saying? So I think, Leicester has a blessing over it for sure, and it's it's what I've called home. Do you know what I mean? Even though I'm a Man United fan, by the way, but Leicester is in my heart and always. How does that nice. work, though, as a as a football fan? You, you can you can flip between the two. One hundred percent. Is that like UK? Is that is that England and Manchester? It's like yeah, one hundred percent. You know, um, Leicester's my home and my heart. Man United is my love. If, Man, if Leicester come play Man United, I want to be in a Man United and. And even if I'm in a Leicester end, I'm still clapping for my team yeah, won the cup. Well, I, you know, yeah, yeah, really. so, and, and you know, it was a blessing as a kid. You know what I mean? Once you have a passion, where it's like you, you're a hip hop head, and then you start playing house. Mm. Yeah, and just because you know house is what's paying the bills, you always got a love for hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and you really do have the love for hip hop as well. Like, yeah. I mean. Some of the product I was privy to jumping into the SS layer, formation layer studio. Dude, like that spot, and you do, I can't even begin to, but the songs you're dropping, yeah. this is some next stuff ready for next year, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm doing the yeah, Green Law project, it's my never seen Law, working yeah, that's, on that's it. A big project for away. years, 10 years longer. I'm, dro I'm dropping that because the, time, the timing for people that are hearing music now was good. Before, when we were doing that project, it was about. It was about a rave thing, then he went to dubstep, it was all about edit, noise, you know what I mean? Now mm -hmm. people are listening to music again, mm -hmm. yeah? So the timing is well over, well, 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 well overdue, yeah. but it's going to be well worth it, because that project's probably the best thing I've ever done musically. Mm -hmm. Hands down, you know, um, just working with amazing artists, 
pick up just Skyler and Ozzy. Uh, absolutely amazing, but the most talented people I've ever Fantastic. worked with. Is, you know, I mean, next level songwriter, the best. She should be writing for major players. I've always said that every time she does a song, it's like, wow, the lyrics is just like next level. She should be writing for a Beyonce. Yeah. And it's not like a black, I've always said that. You know what I mean? Because I've experienced work with a lot of people. And I'm thinking, yo, she has the passion and desires. I want to big up to the Canadians. Mm. I'm big up to my crew, Streets of Rage. I want to big up to Aspect. and be smashing it. I want to big up to my new kid, Fabricate. He's the hot guy okay. who's going to be smashing this drum and bass thing, yo. Come on, Fabricate. I'm telling you, Fabricate. I've got a guy called Mystic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who else is part of the camp? High Roll, my right hand man, Bulgarians. Yo, so why so you got to understand? And uh, my my connection now is worldwide. High roll with a board born um, in Bulgaria. He's my right hand man, he's my label manager. Uh, yo, I, the thing about dealing with the British mentality is we're too privileged. Yeah. yeah? It's like nobody wants to work unless we get this and we're getting that. We are not working like Try and, everyone has to get benefits for yeah. sure, but sometimes you've got to have a passion. Yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. I do a festival with High Roll. We work together. You know what I mean? They see the benefits for them. They help me high up there, and I, I, I don't think there's enough of that mentality. No, there isn't, and, and I'm not sure that comes from with the Brits. But I think when you've got someone from outside of the UK, yeah. they see a greater vision, yeah. and they can actually they can be the filter of like, well, actually this does have international appeal, yeah. yeah. or it does have. Yeah, you're not thinking of it like that because you're thinking like you're on an island, yeah. which we are. Yeah. You know, like think bigger. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing when people actually flag that and say, yo, do this, that's, that's teamwork. Well, mate, I work internationally, but my team is kind of international. My Twitter guru, a big shout out to Roman Rupert, she's based in America. Mm -hmm. um, um, Tasha, who does my bookings and helps me out like back end stuff, he's based in Vegas. I've got Matt, he's based in England. Mm -hmm. I've got Matt Martin Haro, is based in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. I've got people in Russia, yeah, yeah. and it's just a connect. It's just we're trying to connect. It's, it's very hard to navigate through the noise right now. You can't do it alone. And, I, and I'll say to people that have, you know got small teams, think about the bigger picture. Mm. Yeah, because trying to navigate, trying to sell music in this is hard assembly. Yeah. yeah, so you've got to find smarter ways to get through the noise. Mm. You know, bring people in. You know what I mean? For real. people, yeah, there you go. You control that. What percentage you take that? You know, you could uh, whether you take that and you have to Quite break it. Shit. Yeah, and um, that's what I think before it's like, yeah, no, I'm keeping this, I'm not giving that. Yo, I've got to make all the money and that. Now I'm like, nah, because at the end of the day, it's time. Yeah. And time in life is the only thing you can't get back. So spend your time wisely. It doesn't matter about money, because if you don't have time, all right, let me ask you this question, yeah? If you're lying on your deathbed mm. and the doctor says, right now, you can have anything in the world. You're not going to tell them I want a million pounds. No. You're going to tell them, please give me more time. I yeah. don't want to go. So time is the most precious commodity you can ever have. So make sure you spend your time wisely. And on that note, we're going to go to church. DJ SS, yeah. thank you yeah. so Blessing. much for passing through. For, or rather, me passing through. Yeah. Yo. Yo. And before I go, big shout out to Mel, big shout out to John first, big shout out to Biggie and Warren, of course, uh, Sideways Sun Smith, big, big shout out to Tanya. Big I'm big excited about going to Tanya. Yeah, I think. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure, yeah, man. Let's, yeah, go, let's go get the real word. Yeah. yeah, the real gospel. Yeah. Killer Girl podcast. Yeah. Out, it was out of fashion. You stay lucky, people. Oh, Kenny Ken, big up, Kenny. Um, don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't, alright? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Stay lucky. Preach that shit. Peace.